the other profound revelation that Turing has is that, well, maybe we're just machines, <laughs> right? And uh, just biological machines. And this is a huge shift for him. It feels very different from Godel, who doesn't really believe in reality and thinks numbers are are platonic realities and and Turing kind of thinking we're, we're kind of like we're actually machines and we could be replicated. So of course Turing's influence is still widely felt on many levels. Also the on many levels, yeah. In complexity theories, in theoretical computer science oh, and mathematics, place, but also yeah. in philosophy with his famous Turing test paper. So like you said, conceiving, yeah. like what what is the connection that I guess Gödel never really made between mm -hmm. mathematics and humanity. Mm -hmm. Uh, Turing did, but I think there's another connection to those two people is that they're both in their own way kind of tormented yeah. humans. Yeah, they were very tormented. What aspect of that yeah. contributed to who they are and what ideas they developed? I mean, I think so much. I don't, I don't want to promote the kind of trite trope of the mad genius. You know, if you're brilliant, you are insane. I don't think that. I don't think if you're insane, you're brilliant. Um, but I do think if somebody who's very brilliant, who also chooses not to go for regular gratification in life, mm -hmm. they don't go for money, they don't necessarily value creature comforts, they're, they're not leveraging for fame. I mean, they're really after something different. I think that can lead to a kind of runaway instability, actually, Yeah. sometimes. Um, so they're already outside of kind of social norms. They're already outside of normal connections with people. They've already made that break. Um, and I think that makes them more vulnerable. So Godel you know, did have a wife and a strong relationship, as far as I understand, and had a was a successful mathematician and ended up at the Institute for Advanced Study where he walked with Einstein to the Institute every day. Um, and they talked about, and he proved certain really unusual things in relativity. You you made reference to these rotating galaxies we were talking, and actually Gödel had a model of a rotating universe that you could travel backwards in time. It was mathematically correct. Showed Einstein that within relativity you could time travel. <laughs> um, just a unbelievably influential and brilliant man, but um, he was probably a paranoid schizophrenic. Um, he did have breaks with reality. Um, he uh, was, I think, quite distrustful and feared the, the government, feared his food was being poisoned, and you know, ultimately literally starved himself to death. Um, and it's such an extreme outcome for such a facile mind, you know, for, for such a brilliant mind. I think it's important to sort of not to glorify or romanticize madness or, mm -hmm. or um, suffering. Mm -hmm. But to me, you could flip that around and just be inspired by the peculiar maladies of a, of a human mind, mm -hmm. how they can be leveraged and channeled mm -hmm. creatively. Oh, yeah. I think a lot of us, obviously probably every human has those peculiar qualities. You know, uh, I talk to people sometimes about just my own psychology, and mm -hmm. I'm extremely self-critical, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm drawn to the beauty in people, but because I make myself vulnerable to the world, I can really be hurt by people. Mm -hmm. And that thing, okay, you can lay the, that out, this, uh, this particular human, okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a bunch of people that will say, well, you many of those things you don't want to do Mm -hmm. Maybe don't be so self-critical. <laughs> Maybe don't be so open to the world. Maybe have a little bit more reason about how you interact with the outside world. It's like, yeah, maybe. Or maybe be that and be that fully and channel that into a productive life into, we're all going to die <laughs> in the time we have on this earth. Make the best of the particular weirdness that you have. Mm -hmm. And maybe you'll create something special in this world. And in the end, it might destroy you. And I think a lot of these stories are that. It's not that. Oh, yeah. It's not like saying, oh, because uh, in order to achieve anything great, you have to suffer. No, if you're already suffering, mm -hmm. 
if you're already weird, if you're already somehow don't quite fit in your particular environment, in your particular part of society, use that somehow. Use the mm -hmm. tension of that, the friction of that to create something. I mean, that's what I, you know, uh, Nietzsche who suffered a lot. Mm -hmm from even like stupid stuff like stomach issues like oh yeah God, that can be all everything kinds of, right migraines is like psychosomatic or psychophysical yeah. but and all those that's the real it's like that can somehow be channeled into a productive life it's, mm. it should be inspiring it's a lot of us suffer in mm. different ways yeah i'm a big believer in the tragic flaw actually i think the greeks really had that right um you're describing it what makes us great is ultimately our downfall. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just inevitable. The choice could be not to be great. <laughs> um, and I guess I, I, that's sort of what I mean by they had already broken from a traditional path because they decided to pursue something so elusive and um, that would isolate them to some extent inevitably and that could fail, right? And whose rewards were hard to predict, even. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think that, that all the character traits that went into their accomplishments were the same traits that went into their demise. And um, I think you're right. You could say, well, you know, Lex, maybe you should not be so empathetic. Hold yourself, cut yourself off a little bit, protect yourself, right? But isn't that exactly what you're bringing, one of the elements that you're bringing that makes something extraordinary in a space that lots of people try um, to break through? Yeah, and there, but we should mention that for every girl in Turing, <laughs> there's millions of people who, who, have, right. who have tried and who have destroyed themselves and without... Without, without that, reason. I would find it impossible to not pursue uh, a discovery that I could I could imagine mm, my yeah. way through, or if I can really see how to get there. Uh, I cannot imagine abandoning it for some other reason, uh, uh, fear that it would be misused, which is a real fear, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's a real concern. Um, I don't think in my work, since I'm doing extra dimensions <laughs> in the early universe, but or black holes, you know, I feel pretty safe. But I mean, who knows, right? Bohr couldn't think of a way to use quantum mechanics to kill people. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot imagine pulling back and saying, "Nope, I'm not going to finish this." 